um, where we can have a quick look and chat and see what is new on Grateful Cradle in terms of starting from scratch, setting up a company yourselves, going through the process of employee onboarding. Uh, once employee onboarding has taken place, going through some of the options available to you to set up a payslip for an employee, uh, where the start will happen. And then once that's been completed, um, we also look at the last section, just to recap a little bit on the payroll and CRM integration, and just look at a, a few demonstrations on, on how the payroll system can, can benefit uh, you as a company um, by updating the CRM. CRM on employee onboarding, as well as with um, any leave applications, leave management, and timesheets. Right. <clears throat> um, let's just give a little bit more time just to see if we can just quickly do a, um, a check on the on the sound quality. Is everybody are you happy? Can you can everybody listen to the sound? Um, is the sound uh, good and clear? The screen with. Screen visits are very good and clear. Fantastic. Right, thank you. <clears throat> right, a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Piers Kiepers. I am the Great Soft Payroll Product Manager. I started my career back in 2001, and then I've been in payroll ever since. Uh, some of my good qualities in life is ability to remain calm under stressful situations. Um, I've got a vast knowledge of the payroll and HR industry, dealing with payrolls on a regular basis and working in a support environment. You get to, 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 to experience what our clients are experiencing and see systems from their point of view and not necessarily just from uh, a payroll point of view uh, or from the other side, from the development side. So, and <clears throat> some of my, my uh, Things that I enjoy on a, on, on, a, on a regular basis is I like to play a game of golf. And then I've been in Cape Town since 2006. And my biggest challenge so far to date, I'm trying to be a line supporter that lives in Cape Town. Um, a lot of stormless supporters down here, and it's, it tends to make your life a little bit, your life a little bit hard, especially when the Lions did lose a game. <clears throat> right, now that you know who I am, Let's move on to the agenda. Uh, quick introduction is what we currently have done. Then we're going to go through the process of concept of creating a new company. Now, this is always a stressful time in any environment. Uh, due to a company setup, is the foundation of what you want to achieve at the end of the day. Now, for clients and, and, <clears throat> and, and uh, companies who work with other payrolls, um, setting up a company from scratch um, tends to be a tedious process. So it's something that is always considered as, listen, if I get this wrong, everything else is not going to fall into place. So it's something that, that has to be done accurately from the start. Um, so I'm going to show you the new tool that uh, Great Soft is, Great Soft Payroll is introducing into, into our environment. And it's a, it will guide you through the process to make, to take all the stress away from setting up a new company. Once we've done that, we're going to look at ways of creating new employee, how to onboard staff members into either the new company or some of the tools that can be used for the current company and just uploading employees inside there. Then obviously, this could spend a little bit of time on salary information, uh, looking at the two or, or different ways of updating your uh, an employee's salary. And then uh, once we've completed that section, we can also look at leave management Speak about payroll, our payroll can, our payroll manages leave, and then also what impact the leave management has on your CRM timesheet integration. Great. Right, <clears throat> then before we start, just a small section, the webinar will be recorded and shared with all the uh, participants. All questions will be answered during the Q&A session. Please post questions in the question section, some participants can upload questions and comments on there. There will be two polls that's planned for today and then one survey at the end. And then we would appreciate you answering all three of the, all three of these as your, in, as your input is always valuable to us. Uh, for general support queries, you can contact our payroll support at gracelf.co.za. And in any of our account specific questions, we can, you can contact your account manager or info at gracelf.co.za. Great. Right. Let's start. Let's look at payroll, creating a new company. Now, <clears throat> we've defined this thing into eight, 
eight easy steps to set up in your company. Now, what is important for this whole process is that you have all the company details ready for you during the setup. Obviously, if you don't have some of some of these things um, uh, available, um, it might cause a, a delay in getting this thing set up, or it might cause something that people have to come back at a later point of time to complete your setup. So the more info you've got at hand when you do a setup, uh, the, the more complete your foundation in setting up a payroll company will be, which will then relate to easier employee onboarding, payslip generations, and obviously getting the end result out of it by paying their staff members, doing the EMP 201s, the RP5 submissions, and everything that goes along with it. Now, <clears throat> let's start by looking at the payroll itself. Right. Um, hopefully, my screen is big enough for everybody just to have a quick view and to see that that everything is clear and that you do have a, a clear result of what is in front of you. Right, <clears throat> setting up a new company. Um, under the payroll administration menu, you will find an option called set up a company. Now, this is where your eight easy steps uh, will reside with you. Right. It starts off with setting up a company. You've got statutory details to complete. Then there's pay intervals, new structures, departments, any additional information that might assist and can assist you by completing the payroll setup. Obviously, the activation of leave for the new company and then a final validation to take place. Right, setting up a new company. The first question that will come through this is provide a company name. Now, this is also the company name that will be declared on your EMP 201s, that will be declared to SARS. So it is invaluable to, to put in the company name as it is registered. Now, just for the purpose of today, I am going to set up a company that I'm going to call Acme Payroll. Trade name. Complete the information. Now, because Payroll is multi tenanted and we do also cater for our uh, for, for our, uh, other countries, you have the option to select a, a tax state for this company to reside in. Obviously, if you select the, the options for South Africa, the payroll financial year start and end month will default to you to March and it will end in the month of February. There is no selection for this because this is our statutory rules. If I select Namibia or any of the other, other African countries, the financial year start and end date will default for you. Right. Provide a company registration number. And for this, I'm just going to enter a number I have with me. There we go. And then what public holidays do you want to apply to your country? So South Africa will match the South African tax state as it was selected. Then provide a work phone number. Now, as you complete this, you will notice that some of the fields and the options to complete is marked with a red asterisk and others are not. Where you do not see a red asterisk, it's a non-compulsory field and you do not have to complete this. Um, for this, I am gonna complete as much as I can. Unit number. What complex flat name uh, does the company reside in? Just going to call it a payroll business park, provide a street number, and you will notice that these requirements are must have for easy file submissions and those things. So, if you complete all of this, it means you will not have to come back to this at some point later in time uh, for completion. Street name, I'm just going to provide a payroll lane. Then, what city and town, city or town, does the company reside in? Um, this one I'm going to select for Bloemfontein and then we've put some smart um, search engine inside here where your postal code will then search for you and allow you to select any of the Bloemfontein postal codes um, that is currently available. So I'm just going to select one of those and once I've completed all of my setup company details, I can proceed with the next button. Right, statutory details. Again, you will find that some of the fields are marked with the asterisks, which are fields that has to be completed. And there's also fields that are non-must um, non complete options. Uh, for tax reference, I am just going to put in the number. Um, and you will notice there are some validations that will apply on these fields. UIF number. 
and also your employment equity registration number. Then, if the company doesn't enjoy diplomatic indemnity, you've got an option to toggle it. We do a default selection of no. Um, SARS SDL number will, will by default uh, follow the tax reference number, and then also your SARS UIF number will by default follow your tax reference number. If the company is at this point of time exempt from SDL or UIF, you do have an option to mark it as a no, and the number will be taken away. Mark it as a yes, and the number will stay. If we do default this to a no, the system will also, at the point of time when we look at pay slips, not calculate SDL contributions. Right, then the next one, your ETI SIC number that needs to be completed. Um, there are search engines built inside here. For our purposes, I'm just going to select an accounting and bookkeeping activities. This is your ETI employment tax incentive um, registration uh, registration code that is required for submissions right then the next one employer trade classifications where you need to specify the employer trade again there's a search function finality inside it that you can that makes it easy to find what is needed then <clears throat> we get to the e-filing contact person our e-filing contact person is the person who will re be responsible for the e-filing submissions that must be completed on a monthly basis at this point of time, we know that there is no users for this company selected yet, but in majority of instances, it is the company who is going to do the payroll for their clients who will have an e file contact person, um, as well as a, as a UIF file uh, contact person. Again, there is a search functionality and it will display to you all of the users that is currently already captured onto on the payroll. The same with you fine. And I am just making my selection. Right, then <clears throat> once you've completed your statutory detail sections, proceed to click on next. Um, <clears throat> then looking at pay intervals. Um, what pay intervals is how do you pay your employees? Do you pay them on a monthly basis? Do you pay them on a weekly basis? Do you pay them on a fortnightly basis? Now, one can also be as creative as splitting a director monthly from the normal salary employees and doing it such a way you can have one company but run directors in a separate uh, paintable instance as what you will do for normal staff members. Um, select a tax year that you want to create the company for. Then the second option is paintable. Now, under the paintable, your options are weekly, fortnightly, or monthly. Now I am gonna set up some salary staff members. And in this case, I'm gonna give my paintable a name and I'm gonna call them salaries. Then your first payroll processing month. This is in what month do you wanna start with your payroll? What month do you wanna first start capturing your payroll? The options are from March to the end of February. Now, <clears throat> The company that I am going to set up, I want to start in March and I'm going to capture March, April, May up until I get to the current period. The period end date will default to the last day of March and your period start date will default to the first day of March. Then pay date selection. What day are you going to pay your employees? You've got options, the last Monday, the last Tuesday, the last Wednesday, the last Thursday, or you can have a specific date when when you're going to do your payments right and in this case i am selecting the 25th once i've made my selection i can click on create a pay interval and you will see that the system has successfully created or added the, the, your first pay interval for you if you want to split your directors from the normal salary employees select the name or enter a name for the next pay interval. If everything else remains exactly the same for them, you can create pay interval and you will see that you've got two monthly pay intervals, but salaries and directors are now split. To do a weekly one, select the weekly pay interval, uh, provide a name for this, we call this wages, and then your first payroll processing month will be March. Uh, just keep in mind, you will have to select what will be the first week of the month? Uh, sorry, what day will the first week end in March? Now, my selection is the Thursday, and my pay date will be the Friday. Click on Create Pay Interval, and I've successfully added yet another pay interval into my company. 
you can continue with this and run with this um, by keeping on setting up these panels. Right, once you've done that and your paintable selections have been done, please proceed to click on next. Right, then we get to a structure section. Now, by default, the system will create a structure called head office for you. The head office is based on the details that you've provided during the setup of a company. This is an optional field at this point, and you can continue to click, to, to click on next. If, however, the company have different branches or the company has a bit of a structure set up that needs to take place, and I'm not referring to an admin department or a sales department or a um, telephonic supporting department. Um, this is, for example, the company needs to be split in terms of a Cape Town office and a Joburg office. Then you can add these structures right now. Provide a description. I do have a Pretoria branch and I'm also going to be required to put in the address for this. Unit number two, Fatal Business Park. Uh, provide a street number and give it a street name. Um, let's make it a payroll lane again. City, uh, Pretoria. And again, we will give you all the Pretoria postal codes to select from and click on creating a structure. And you will see I've got a head office and I've got one called Pretoria. If you want to add another structure, for example, Cape Town, uh, you can proceed to do so right. Now provide a unit number. Again, I'm just going to give it a same name, uh, providing a street number of two. I'm going to do a payroll length here again. My city will be Cape Town, and my postal codes will display to me all of the all of the Cape Town um, options available. Create a structure, and I've got three different structures now with me. Right, once completed, you can click on next. Now we get to the one where you do departments. Now departments are sections within a structure. A department could be something for the admin staff. It could be a, um, the sales staff could be a department description on its own. Keep in mind, it's optional. It's not a must do. And as a default, Paddle will create one for you that's called none. Um, to add a department, simply provide a description your admin department, then we will display to you the structures that was previously created. You have head office, you've got Victoria, and you've got Cape Town. If you've got admin staff in all three of these structures, click on select all and create a department. You will get a notice department has been added. I can see it there. And if I click on it, it will display to me my structures that has been assigned to it. To add another department, um, I'm just going to rename this 41 for, for sales. I know my sales staff resides within the Cape Town office only. And I only make that selection, creating a department, and my sales will be in my Cape Town structure only. You can continue to add new and new and new departments up until the point of time when you've catered for all the departments that possibly could reside within the company. Once your selection is made and you are happy with it or you want to make a change for example i click on sales and sales should also reside in my pretoria branch i can select them save and now i can see that both in pretoria and at cape town i will have a sales department once that selection is, is done continue to click on next now here we will ask you for additional information the additional information as a default on you will be select the medical aid. Now the company does belong to discovery. Some can select both discovery and medical aid schemes. This will become in handy the moment you start loading your employees that you can start updating the, the medical aid uh, and the plans that the employee resign on. Your payment format. This is the EFT file that will be exported from the payroll that will be uploaded into the bank. So if the company does have a net bank business bank um, facility to import to, select it, and the setup will then be allocated to the company. So when you get to month end, you can extract the file, upload to the bank, and you can pay all the employees in once. Then what retirement funds does this company have or belong to? 
there's a Sun Lab, there's an Old Mutual, there's a Liberty, there's a Deton. If you don't see the one for the company, you can add by simply clicking on New Retirement Fund, provide a name and add the fund. For this purposes, I'm just going to select a fund that's already been set up called Deton, and I'm adding the fund. Then, <clears throat> for payslip purposes, if you want to display the company logo on a payslip, you've got the opportunity to do this right now. I have already do have a file here that I'm just going to call drag and drop. It's literally as easy as that. And you can see that the logo will be displayed for you. Once this is done and you've set up the additional information, you can continue to click on next. On the next page of activation of leave, by default, the default leave transactions will display to you. Annual leave, family leave, study leave, sick leave, paternity leave, maternity leave, overtime and leave of leave. These are the ones that has been predefined and they have all been set up as per the BCEA. If the client has different leave rules applicable to them, you can edit and by editing, you can add more leave rules to the payroll. Um, provide a leave rule name, then uh, does it apply to all the pay intervals or just to certain ones? So if you only want to set up a leave rule applicable to directors, so if you are a director, you get your 20 days from the beginning, you don't accrue it from 15, you can do it as, as such. Once you've made your selection and you've done everything that's required, click on the add override rule. But in terms of my demonstration today, I'm not going to add a, an additional leave rule right now. Right, once that's done, click on next and you can continue to the next page. Right, we will give you a final validation. Now, this final validation will display to you all the input that you've done, the company name. Um, does it pass the validations? Anything with the red cross on it? And I'm going to display to you by leave that there was no additional rules added. So everything that has a red cross is something that hasn't been completed and still requires completion at, completion at some point. The names, the state details, everything that you have completed right now is there. You can still go back to make amendments if need be. If you are satisfied with the input and you're ready to proceed, click on submit a new company and okay. The system will now start to compile all of the information that you've given and create your company, write your company import result. The payroll company has been successfully created. Options, add another new company or return to the home screen. All right. <clears throat> okay. Right, that's it. As simple as that. Eight easy steps and you have successfully added a new company to your existing client base. Directly, we're just going to move on to the employee onboarding side because this is the next step that usually does take place. Once you've created your company, you're happy with everything that you've done, is how to onboard your employees. Now, Great of Payroll has one of two ways to do this. Onboarding should be an accurate, quick, and easy process to do. Now, there's two ways to onboard an employee using the new employee take on guide or employee input or import the employees in bulk from an Excel sheet. This is something that we have done some time ago, and uh, it really, really takes the ease into adding a new employee. So directly from my home menu, I could access the employee take on page. The take on page again consists of five run five steps to, to run through to add a new employee. And again, employee details, you've got your red asterisks. In other words, these things are must do um, and you cannot proceed without it. So step one, select the employee citizenship. Then when we get to an ID number, uh, provide the employee ID. You will notice that the system does do a validation on the ID number to see if it is a correct ID number. If I do put in an incorrect value, you will get a value of this is not correct. Right, then provide the employee with a, an employee number. And a name, second name if there is one, a third name if there is one, and then obviously a surname if required. Right, there's no passport number for the employee. A 
tax number. If you don't have this ad yet, we're not going to stop you to say, please complete this. Keep in mind, it's a field that will have to be completed at some point. Um, at some point due to a, uh, what do you call it, <coughs> for your RP5 and tax purpose processes. You can also, uh, also add a picture onto the employee. And I'm just going to drag and drop a picture. Again, there we go. And click will also do the job for us. Right, there we go. So we've got our employee, um, a picture of the employee on, on loaded. Right, then additional details will consist of um, extra information that's required. Now, I am going to run through this quite quickly. There are certain items such as gender, which will default from the employee ID number, marital statuses, individual with an ID number, and provide ethnic groups. Then continue to click next on the contact details. It is the employee address details, as well as some of his personal details, such as home numbers and work numbers, which I am going to skip for now. Um, and we can always update this at a later point. Job details is what company does the employee work in? And I'm going to select my Acme payroll company that I've set up. Pay into all, this employee is a salary paid employee. In what structure? These are the structures that was part of my, my setup. Uh, person works in Pretoria. What department? Person works in admin. Um, there is no positions I set up yet, so I'm just going to create a position. Uh, just need to type in the correct field. There we go. Person works in support, and this person will be part of a structure called staff. Um, provide a starting date for this person 21 101. Assign a grade if there's a grade applicable, and also an employee that works X amount of days in a month. Right, then we go click on next. Pay method, how are you going to pay this person? Cash, check, EST, EFT. If you do say EFT, it's going to force you to complete the asterisks. If not, select check or cash and you can continue. The system will then do some sort of a confirmation on the employee. It will see it will say employee past validations. Please click on finalize to complete the employee. You can also submit this employee to CRM if the requirements are there. Right, for this, I'm just going to switch off the CRM integration so that it doesn't load the employee in CRM. Once you click on finalize, the payroll system will then create your employee. This is one of the methods that you can use to onboard a new employee. The second option to onboard an employee, I'm just waiting for this to complete and the system to run through its processes to add this person into the correct structures and everything that runs with it. But like I've mentioned in the beginning, you can also import the employees in bulk. Now, why it's doing its thing here. Oh, we've got an issue over there. Right. But let's just continue with the bulk one. Uh, updating the employees in bulk. For this, I'm going to use the bulk management base. Now, this is something that one always feels, listen, importing employees from an Excel sheet sounds complicated and complex. We don't know the formats and everything that, that, that runs with it. What we've done is we've simplified the employee onboard process. And that is to give you what you need to complete this. One is a sample file. And a sample file will consist of an instructions tab that we have right there where we will tell you all the required fields are marked with a blue background and some black ink. The optional fields will be blue with orange and the non-optional fields will be blue with a white front. Then clicking on the second tab, and this is what you will need to complete. And it's a simple copy and paste of what you have received into the correct columns. So here, here's your employee numbers, first name, surname, date of birth, the format of this have to be YYY forward slash MM forward slash DD. In red, we highlight what must be done here. Now, this is a simple process. And then if you look, for example, at column G, you've got something there saying, refer to the info sheet for code required. And this is the payroll company that's needed. And the next one will say, um, like grades of payroll <coughs> for the department, you also need to refer to that uh, to the info sheet. And so you get some of these things as you go throughout. Now, where do we get this? Right there on the same tab, you've got your info sheet. And again, I 
just want to open this into an Excel so that it's a better view for all to see. There we go. So if you are going to create employees for the company called Acme Payroll, you have to use the code 003. These are the codes for the different types of intervals. Your payment methods will be listed for you. You have position clusters, and those are all the clusters available to use to complete on your input sheet. Your grading is N, and those are the different employee types. Your Cape Town office, head office, and Pretoria are the codes that's required, and these are also the departments that's needed to be able to complete. Now, what you will notice as well is I've got a tab for every company I have inside my payroll. Right. <clears throat> Now, what I've done in the interim was I've created the file already that I have done some employee completions on it. So I'm just going to select these and go to my next. The system will start to process the file and see if what you've entered in this, is this applicable? Is this required? Can I use this to create my employees with? While it's busy running, I'm just going to go back into this section and Drag it a little bit further. There we go. So payroll company, pay interval structures, position clusters. Now there is some smart technology also built inside this. For example, if you've set up five different companies and you want to import employees from five different companies, but you want to do it in one go, you can differentiate the employees that must go to what companies inside the payroll company field. For example, um, just need to drag this a little bit way that I can do an enable edits. Right, there we go. So for example, employees that I want to import into uh, the Acme Payroll company will be double S3. Employees I want to import into a different company will be inside that company and you can continue. So you can do one import to import all of the employees in one go. See, it's busy processing. We're sitting on a time frame of 83%. Checking for errors. Once it's happy, you will get a message successfully imported 16 employees. You have a view take on report that will give you a little bit of a breakdown of what you've entered on what employees. And it's a page per employee. So there's Roslyn um, with ID numbers in what company was she imported. And you will see that this thing will contain roughly around about 16 pages of information, which contains the 16 employees I did import from Excel. Now it's a very quick and easy method to import employees from an external place into payroll. And this will then allow you to start capturing your salaries as of now. Right, there we go. Two different methods to create an employee. One is to use the near employee take on guide. And the second one will be to import employees in bulk. Right now, we just want to take a quick poll from start to finish. What is the average time it takes you to set up a company with 10 employees to produce pay slips? We give run about one minute for this. Twenty or forty-one. Again, we thank you for your input in this. Right, amazing. Sitting on fifty seconds, and I'm going to end the poll now. Thank you. Right, that's it. Start to finish, what is the average time it takes you to set up a company with run about 10 employees? Okay. Great of payroll, updating salary information. So what we've done in a matter of minutes was create a new company. We've loaded one employee manually and we've done an import of employees of run about 16 in a matter of minutes. The next step will be updating your salary information. Now, this is something for those of you who have been working on Gradsoft already. Um, 
you have seen this, you've worked with this. Now, the user that I'm going to use for this is assigned to many panels and many companies. Uh, for purposes of this, I'm just going to select the company that's um, that I have created, and I've done the import for those 16 employees into. Right, these are the 16 records of the employees that I've just managed to, to import into. Right, then looking at an employee, <clears throat> keep in mind, this was done in a matter of seconds. You will notice the employee will have employee details that was captured on the, on the Excel sheet. It's employer details. It has positions allocated in what branches does the employee work in. Um, the leave has automatically started to do its thing by giving 15 days and working out what will the balance be as of today based on the rules and everything that runs with it. Um, there's also some documents that the employee can already download if it was pre-uploaded by the HR person, for example, a welcome pack and those type of things can be done from the document storage thing. Right, but setting up a payslip, coming back to this. Now, the long method, the long way around for something like this is to do this on a one-by-one -one method where already you will see that you have ED code transactions that you can solicit. Now, I'm going to select the cost to company method of loading, getting this onto an employee as this is the most, uh, the longest way to do things. Uh, provide an employee with a package and I'm just going to make this package 55 or 50,000 Rand. This package was done and updated as of the 1st of January. And by saving it, you will see that the payslip setup is already going to start to do a, a bunch of things. The payroll sitting in the month of March is going to do some company contributions, which is your UIF, your SDLs, calculate the payment, what the EFT amounts will be, and then also give you your basic salary value. The second thing that needs to be done on the employee is to provide information, for example, on the medical aid. Now, from a medical aid point of view, um, the company does belong to a discovery. We select the plan that the employee is on, um, select any benefits, if there were benefits, what date did the employee join? I'm just going to uh, pre-select the date here of 2021-01-01. Uh, do you apply waiting periods, provide a medical aid number for the employee? And then also, how many people does that person have on his medical aid? Just himself, is there a child benefit? Um, is there <clears throat> let's just add a child for the for the employee? And then also at the bottom of the screen, you will find medical aid 3000. This is medical aid company. How much is the company going to contribute as an expense to the medical aid? You've got various options, it's not just limited to 125.50, it can be configured to do a lot more than just this. For purpose of today, I'm going to do a 50-50. And once I make my selection, you will see that the priority plan for the for the person and a child dependent is 4534. And to split that into a 50 50 um, company and employee contribution. And there's also a tax credit that will apply to the two, two members on the medical aid scheme. Uh, one more item to add to this will be, for example, the retirement fund. And during the retirement fund drop down, uh, you select the plan that is applicable to to the um, to the company, and also produce who contributes what. Is it seven point five employee? Is it a nine percent contribution by the employer? And once you click on it, oh, sorry, there's just an input date that I still need to add in, which I uh, skipped. There we go. The system will then do your pension fund contributions, 4,500 uh, from the company. And then from an employee level, there is a 7350 and you will have a retirement fund tax credit sitting of 8250, which will consist of uh, a combined contribution of the 45 and the 3750. Keep in mind, still taxing the employer contribution. Right, this is one method of setting up a, a pension or a package item for an employee. The second option can be a transactional import that can be done. Again, under your payroll processing, your transaction import sections, select the company that you want to do this import for, select the paint tool that you want to do the import for, and I'm going to update a batch 
not normal. Normal is when you do items such as overtimes, work, commissions, and those things from an Excel sheet, which is nice, for example, clock out system, how many hours the employee worked, etc. But for this purposes, I want to import package items. I want to import how much this employee earns as a package. Select it, click on OK, and the system will start to do the import for you. Now, the Excel file, uh, from the top of the page, you will see it's an Excel file that's required, and it must have the following columns, an ED code, an employee number, amount of quantity, and this simplifies the import. Once this thing completes, I'll open up the, the Excel sheet so you can just have a quick view of the minimum information that's required to import uh, package setups for on an employee level. Right, there we go. Starting to progress. If there's any errors on the file and it's not happy to find what it, what it needs, it will give you an error as such. There is one error on my upload file. And the upload files cannot upload duration if there's future rows, which is the employee I manually did. So what I did was I said there's a package for this person at a later date than what the salary effective date of the new upload. Right, just going back to the employees. I do want to select another employee, which was part of my Excel upload. And as promised, this is the Excel sheet that I did upload. Your employee numbers, your ED code, the amounts, and effective date. As from when is this applicable? And just looking at my payslip, there's the packages items loaded as the effective date indicated on the Excel sheet. Just looking at the employee that it failed to do an upload form. On my upload sheet, I indicated the uh, package, the update to be effective from the first of the first. But as indicated here, it's on the same date and it what the Excel will not overwrite the other. If my Excel had a date of two, one day after the package, it would have done the update successfully. Right. At this point of time, one will still have to go through each employee and set up the medical aid and the pension provident retirement fund as what we've done from the first employee. Right. <clears throat> Great, updating payroll and salary information. Quick and easy, either using Excel or go through the employee one by one. We do have a second poll coming. Will you or your clients benefit if payroll systems could integrate with SARS e filing the EMP 201? I'm going to give run about, let's make it another minute for this. And this is for payroll systems to automatically load EMP 201s on e filing, removing and taking away the burden of doing it manually. This one was a very quick vote. Right, I thank you for your input on this. Um, something to look out for for the future. Right, we can end the poll now. Thank you so much. We've got 93% of the votes going for yes, 7% uh, for no. Um, thank you. Right, then <clears throat> the benefits of an integrated leave management system. Now, this is where I'm going to go back to Grades of Payroll and the leave management system it has and how it integrates into the CRM environment. Right, leave. Leave management is a dreaded task of every HR manager. And for those of you who are sitting inside here thinking about, listen, I need to reconcile my leave. It's a time that when everybody goes into a goosebump stage and I hope I've got all the records. Where's this paperwork? Where's this? Where's that? get all the information together and then start putting everything either on the Excel sheet or on some other documents to make sure that 
at the end of the day to reconcile a month's worth of leave application or balances. And that is just speaking about a company consisting of 20 employees. Imagine doing something like 50, 100, 150 staff members or a lot more. Um, catching costs. If you've got a pay also, if you've got a leave management system that can do this for you, imagine your free time that you've got now to do other things, completing the company's GLs and all of those things, um, <clears throat> just to ensure that, that, that those things are also accurate. It's a controlled environment for leave applications. You can only apply for leave if it, one, passes the basic of employment, two, it passes company rules, three, Leave should be able to be configured by company policy. In other words, um, after five years of service, you get extra days. Is that something that you want to manually manage or do you want a system that can manage those things for you? If you apply for sick leave two consecutive days, you must provide a sick leave note. If you don't, you can't apply for it. Um, workflow approval. I mean, how great is this? I apply for leave, my manager gets a notification and he can um, either approve or decline it. Um, it eliminates paperwork. Everything that you do on a leave management system that's decent enough is auditable. So you can audit anything that was done, who applied for it, who approved it, on what day was it done, etc. And then the point, last point, seamless integration should we update other systems? For example, the employee is also an employee on CRM. Should we also update the timesheet with the leave made uh, or the leave that was approved by manager? If you can combine all of those things into one, you've got a very successful flow of events from applying for a leave application up until the point of time when the leave application has been approved. Now, in order for me to just do a quick showcase on this, I'm going to select an employee. And keep in mind, I am a manager. So I am going to see a little bit more view than what a normal staff member would have seen if he did the application himself. Right, there is my leave page. Now, <clears throat> normally from an employee view, you will only see leave, you will not see anything else. On the leave screen, you have annual, family, maternity, overtime, and leave of leave. And you've got a very quick overview of how many days do you have available as of today. This specific individual today has 18 days available to him, and he's got an entitlement of 20 days. If I click on the drop down, I will see that I have already used two days of my current cycle, um, which allows me for then the 18. I will also have a view of what my cycle end, how many days will I have then. And my leave cycle started with a positive balance of 1.67 days. To apply for leave, the employee will simply click on a new application. From the new application, he will select the days he wants to apply for. For this, I'm going to make a selection from the 29th of April up until the 2nd. You will notice the 2nd will be flagged for you as a public holiday. Um, an employee simply clicks on the apply button and an email will be distributed to both himself that he applied for it, as well as to his manager that, listen, Pierre wants to apply for leave on this day. Now, when a manager does a view of the employee, the manager will have a quick calendar view about when his leave applications due. There's a lot more things for a manager to go and view and see on this. Um, if the manager is happy for this, He's got two methods of approving this. The first one will be to use a bulk leave approval page. The second one is to go to the employee and open the actual application. Once the manager does open up the actual application, a system tool will allow him then to approve the leave application. Now, it's only upon the approved leave application that this application will be submitted through to CRM to update the employee's timesheet for the specific days he applied for. Now, you as an administrator, you as a manager, you can view this to see if it was successfully done or not. Just waiting for the application to open again. That one has been approved. And let's open up CRM, which I have here somewhere. There we go. And just going to search for the employee that I want to showcase. There we 
go. So it's a push through another. There we go. Sorry. There we go. And you will have a quick view about the timesheet entry that was captured for the employee. Just do a quick view history for this. Sorry, I just need to refresh this page. It looks like our internet is giving problems at the moment. There we go. I'm not 100% sure what happened there with Google going around yesterday and doing a couple of crashes and stuff. We've had our fair share of uh, um, <clears throat> being kicked out of our own system. Just one more sec, there we go, leave application, and I'm back here. Seems like we're back up and running again. Leave application was made. It's unable to sync the overhead code. Please refer to your manager. This is in case it has failed. But if you do get a message as such, you can always just retry the application again. And I'm getting another error message. Not sure why, uh, something that we can just basically work on. Just want to see if I can do a acquire application. I've got a feeling that the application that I'm being made is into a cycle, not yet for recording purposes. I just do one into a from January the 4th to the fourth and I'm going to apply for an, a week and I'm going to approve it directly. And just to see if it does work, push through. Okay, we've got the successfully synced through to CRM. Just recapping and looking for the employee. There we go. So this is the application I've just made. And when I open the application, I will see that I've got 8.5 hours captured throughout and six hours on a Friday for leave. If this leave has to be canceled, declined, the manager can access the application, select to decline it, save it. And again, the sync will take place, which will then remove the approved application from the employee. I uh, just need to go back. And again, find the employee. And you can clearly see already that the 40 hours of leave that has been submitted for this have been cancelled. Right. Thank you all for today. Um, I really do appreciate everybody's time and uh, would also like to know more about more. So if there's any comments or anything else that, that you would need to add, I'm just going to provide a little bit more details onto our, onto our page. Um, if there's any questions that need to be answered, uh, we will get back to you on the, on the questions that we couldn't get to throughout the session. Unfortunately, we only have run about an hour for this. Um, there will be a survey. Please remember the survey that will be at the end of the closing of the webinar. We will appreciate your feedback. And if you'd like to know more about this, my email address is peer.scapers at greatsoft.co.za. And if you want to, we can always arrange a virtual cup of coffee, have a few chats about this. I also would like to get your ideas, your input on things, maybe some something that you've thought about that would be great in a payroll system, in a payroll environment, and other features that that's could be of value to us. Thank you all. Have a wonderful day.